Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about one of the important topic in developmental biology which is in continuation to our previous classes about gastrulation. Gastrulation. No. In previous class we have discussed about blastula. You know it is nothing but a spherical ball of cells. That means a blastoderm will be the outer layer and it encircling a blastocele. That's it. But these blastula will undergo a dramatic significant event without which we cannot expect even the existence of life. You know, it's like, you know, multicellularity or in the precursor cell for organogenesis is through gastrulation. I mean, the crux point for organogenesis is gastrulation. What exactly and how it achieves this goal of multicellularity, you know? Blastula, the blastoderm muscles, they undergo movements, what we call morphogenetic movements or formative movements. This movement that leads to complete reorganization of the embryo. Reorganization of the, what we call massive reorganization of the embryo in such a way that it laid the fundamental basis for multicellularity. You know, this gastrulation leads to the formation of three primary germinal layers, what we call, with reference to Triploblastic animals say outer ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. With respect to diploblastic animals like Nidarians, just two layers ectoderm and endoderm. That's it. Here, you know, so gastrulation, what exactly uh, as I discussed, it is a crux point of the basis for multicellularity or the precursor for organogenesis. And how it achieves that? You see, it's like it is nothing but a process through which the presumptive organic rudiments will move from surface of the blastula to their respect to our specific locations or prospect to locations is gastrulation that means it's like you know we have discussed already in previous classes each embryo will have their is what called fit with respect to detonate uh, cleavage or uh, embryo i'm saying so that means each part of the embryo will have their own fit if you know, the common point in case of yeah, the embryogenesis is specific precursor what we call uh, organic rudiments will be there in different parts of the embryo and they will move towards in the inside that means inward movement so that it leads to what we call balkanization or segmentation say for example ectoderm we have discussed on gastrulation leads to the formation of three germ primary germ layers ectoderm leads to formation of skin brain nervous tissue and other external tissue say mesoderm leads to muscle skeletal mass system circular system then endoderm leads to lumen of that means a lining of that gut and other internal tissues that means i told you already the precursor for organogenesis how say first they, they should be a segmentation like such kind of organs that means x organs from ectoderm y organs from mesoderm z organs from endoderm what we call so for that we have to add, uh, identify presumptive areas for organic for, for organogenesis and accordingly they have to move to respect to locations we cannot expect you know it's like we cannot expect every or or, or organogenesis at one particular point they have to move there should be a, a particular layering for convenient development of organogenesis so so ultimately the all in, in a nutshell gas to involve the migration of organic forming cells from the surface of blastula to inside is gastrulation. Now, the major significance of gastrulation is, I told already, formation of three germ layers, primary germinal layers through which the each and every organ will be formed later onwards. And most important it is, we will discuss in blastulation, the repeated, that means the series of mitotic divisions up to blastula only. After it forms, that means blastula, the cleavage rate will fall down, which come down, and so the growth also. Here, the most <coughs> important event during gastrulation is cell motility, what we call morphogenetic movements. They have to move at different uh, at, at different locations according to the adhesive properties, according to the cell architecture. That means the cell shape will also alter. So it's all different significant events of gastrulation and burn and most important is oxidation rate will be increased because you know cell differentiation and this they the no cell movement that means cell motility it requires higher energy for thus oxygen consumption will be high that means metabolic requirement will be changed and also nuclei 
will become physiologically active here and also the paternal chromosome will start showing influence at this point so the oxidation rate will be high at the same time the nuclei will, will become physiologically active at the same time cleavage rate will come down these are the significant aspects of gastrulation you know they take a particular example say amphioxus say blastula a simple ball like structure it undergo invagination what we call in pocketing in pocketing of blastula that leads to gastrula that means double layer or walled cup like structure is gastrula and this layering is essential for organogenesis okay these are all about gastrulation so say a particular example as we discussed already prism to prism to organic rudiments move moves to specific locations specific locations is gastrulation say particular example a in case of you know amphioxus say say amphioxus gastrulation in amphioxus as we discussed already Plasma is nothing but a double a, a, a spherical ball like structure with just the blastoderm and inner blastocele. That's it. Later onwards, this blastula will undergo what we have discussed already in pocketing. That means, say, invagination. I have discussed already cell motility now yes, cell motility will be the chief significant feature what we call morphogenetic movements this is a blastula this is a blastoderm and this is a blastocele you know what happens at the vegetal pole the blastoderm then which is actually spherical become flat will become flat i'm just drawing the particular structure okay to avoid the wastage of time it become flat the rest will be okay the same they retain the spherical stru structure the vegetal pole will become flat first that means it not about invasion directly there, there should be a suction surface supportive aspects like you know flat they become flattening what we call at vegetal pole and this is the animal pole then it leads to you know in pocketing invagination simply This in fact, what we got double layered structure. This is a very important point. The crux point for organogenesis, as we have discussed already, you know. And this is a gastula, what we call double layered cup like structure. Then later onwards, different morphogenetic moments appear here. You know, say this is ectoderm, this is mesoendoderm, this is orchenteron, what we call primitive gut. The opening is called blastopore. This blastopore lip, blastopore lip. You know. The simple spherical ball like structure just turn up into a double layered structure, double layered cup like structure with most important thing is trilamina, that means three germinal structure, just for triploblastic and at the same time formation of primitive gut, what we call archentiron, is also the second most development in gas fashion. Its opening is called blastopore. So it's about and how a, a, a basic overview of how gas relation is formed. So the spherical structure to a double layered cup like structure. So then the, we have discussed already the significant aspects of gas relation. You know, here three three germ layers will be formed, three germinal layers: ectoderm, 
mesoderm and endoderm epidermal region is skin brain nervous system etc mesoderm is to muscles skeletal system circulatory system etc endoderm is to lining of gut and other internal tissues this is very important so, but the cleavage weight will come down oxidation rate will be high then nuclei become physiologically active physiologically active this is the significant aspects of gastrulation you know so the formation of three three germ layers you know how they form simply what we call morphogenetic movements morphogenetic are formative movements are formative movements i'll tell you what morphogenesis the word implied morphogenesis formation of specific structural pattern so ectoderm so mesoderm so endoderm and they according they have different you know movements and according they have different or uh, uh, present to organic structures as we will discuss now uh, skin from ectoderm muscle from mesoderm for instance lining of gut from endoderm so th this morphogenetic movements is very important that means the epithelial cells that means that means which form the blastoderm will undergo this morphogenetic movements what, what exactly the morphogenetic movements the migration of organ forming cells or so what we call specific organic rudiments from the surface of blastula to respective location to present to locations generally from outside to that means top that means surface to inward to inward is very important to inward for example you know actually the surface they move from here to inward this is called generally morphogenetic movements according they have different movements like epiboli emboli here emboli means actually they generally they refers to inward movement say with respect to mesoderm and endoderm epiboli means actually they spread generally with respect to ectoderm so ectoderm then the kind of morphogenetic movement of ectoderm is epiboli and kind of morphogenetic movements of endoderm mesoderm and notochordae is, is emboli you know the anterior inward migration from surface because there is a requirement no ectoderm they don't need to go out you know again they are inside but mesoderm has to go what we call embolic movements okay it's about different things and they all will be conveniently represented in fate maps you know fate maps what is fate map you know we have discussed already the diagrammatic representation the diagrammatic representation pertaining to fate or future of different embryonic region so we discuss already na say for instance this is a fate map of an amphibian fate map of an amphibian say up to this is called endoderm up to this is called endoderm endo Term. Then this is called mesoderm. This is called mesoderm. Mesoderm. And this is called notochord. And this is called notochord. and this is called ectoderm you know this is called ectoderm ectoderm and this is called neural plate this is called neural plate neural plate this a fate map the fate map of amphibians you know what is fate map what is it already it is a diagrammatic representation that shows the fate or future of different regions of an embryo say from here ectoderm neural plate mesoderm notochord endoderm this is 
straight manner. Actually, the thing is, detailed gastrulation process is diverse. There is no similarity. Amphibians may have their own pathway. Birds may have their own pathway. Mammals have their own pathway. It actually depends on the kind of egg. Okay, but the thing is here, the basic cellular mechanisms is similar. We have discussed already. Gas, the crux point for gastrulation is movement, what we call cell motility. How, what, technically, it is called morphogenetic movements or formative movements. What exactly they will do? They migrate from surface of the blastula to, to specific locations. But they involve, and it's, it's not just that easy. They, they should involve a cell motility change in cell architecture, cell shape, it's all about more, uh, broad issues of morphogenetic or formative movements. Now we have discussed already now, according to different movements, say morphogenetic movements, movements, say embolic movements, they are like you know, invagination, invagination. Incursion or infiltration, involution, involution, and on the other hand, there is epiboli, intercalation, intercalation, convergent extension, convergent extension. Generally, emboli is referenced to, you know, mesoderm, notochord, endoderm, epiboli with respect to ectoderm. Here, except the broad meaning is inward movement in general. Inward movement, okay, migration is emboli. Epiboli is spreading. Spreading by thinning is very important. So, empoly and epibolic movements. The most that is like a broad categorization of morphogenetic movements. I told you already. Though there is a divergence in that means regarding specific gastrulation, but basic cellular mechanisms are all that means different morphogenetic movements are seen. So we'll discuss about that one further. Okay. Then this is about for am under emboli invagination. Ingression, involution, and the second category is epiboli, intercalation, and convergent extension. These are all different morphogenetic movements. Okay, and these morphogenetic movements, in case of embryo, they are irreversible, irreversible in nature. This is very important. And these morphogenetic movements they will be observed in blastulation, gastrulation, neurulation. But in case of adults, these morphogenetic movements are reversible in nature. This is a very important point. This irreversible makes sense. Because once they because they have to settle at one particular location for further organogenesis, what we call precursor for organogenesis. Okay, this is a very important point. Then regarding specific issues, you know, first involution, that what we call embolic movements. And you know, in invagination, first invagination, the word impact. Say we have already discussed the epithelial cells will undergo different morphogenetic movements. Yeah, the epithelial sheet will, undergo, sheet will undergo invagination, but the thing is, there are two surfaces apical and basal. In general, they are in, in inward movements, but if the apical surface undergoing lumen, for example, you know, when we poke a volleyball, that means which is already partially deflated, it will undergo inward inward movement just like you know for example when you push with the thumb a soft ball you can go inward so this is actually invagination for, for understanding i am saying but sometimes this is about apical surface when the apical surface bends that means the apical surface of the epithelial sheet bends it forms a lumen or a tube or a bulge like structure you know it's called invagination when the basal surface bends it forms evagination invagination evagination in pocketing and uh, or contrary the out pocketing let's say for, for example you know invagination invagination say so this is the epithelial sheet you know this is apical and this is basal you know what happens next they undergo invagination here the word it implies 
you know what happened? It's not just a normal process. There will be a change in cell motility. You know, the cell movement will be different. And cell shape also. You know, invaginate. They, when they invaginate, the cell shape also should what we call alteration of cellular architecture. So, so it's the basis for a differentiation as well. So it is invaginate, you know, apical. And this is basal. Invagination is very important. Then another question is ingression. Ingression. Or is called infiltration. What exactly infiltrate the word infiltrate? Secretly get into another area. Infiltration. This infiltration means certain epithelial cells they detach. They detach from the main line and they form that means they transform into freely migrating mesenchymal cells for example neural crust cells that is a migrate you know this, uh, for example you know they say this is ingression yes this is epithelial sheet later onwards certain cells we have already discussed now see this particular this particular the, this coming out you are discussed uh, for understanding okay you know what happens? They have to change that cell shape, not just the cell motility. Then, at last, these two will get detached out. These two will get detached out, you know. There is a change in cell shape, you know. Change in cell shape. That's it. They come out, detached. What we call, you know, free mesenchymal cells three mesenchymal cells then the third point the third type of embolic movement is in involution involution is like you know just imagine conveyor belts conveyor belts at one part at the edge they undergo inward movement inward movement that means they, they roll inward at the at, at one part like edge this is called involution okay say for instance a two layer cells Okay, this is a two layer cells. We call involution. And this is two layer cells. Then they will go like this. That means The change, the roll inside, this is very important. The roll inside, the roll inside, so that it form an underlying layer. This is very important. Forming an underlying layer, the cell shape and everything will change. See, like this, the movement. This form an underlying layer. This involution, inward, inward movement. Then the most next important epibolic movements. Epibolic. We are discuss now. Just the surface of the the epith, epith, epithelial sheet. They spread. How they spread? By thinning. By thinning. Not the, the, just imagine the shape of the cell. Later onwards they become thin, so that they can spread further. This is very important. It's called epibolic movement. Epibolic, you know? Then the most important intercalation. Intercalation. You know, actually, they move between the rows, two rows. For example, this is one particular row. This is one particular row. Then, we have already discussed. First, they have to change the shape. So that they form one 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 area of cells. This is very important. One area of cells. That means they move between them. 
enter with them intercalation move between two rows for instance here ultimately forming a single array of cells a single array of cells you know these are all different mark for it this become like this single array of cells then convergent extension Con the most important epiphytic movement this is protected okay here yeah, this is also intercalation but with specific direction say for instance you know say the say, say four rows of cells here here okay, you fix it four rows of cells four rows of cells then we undergo next one specific direction of intercalation this is very important you know say for instance specific direction that means they start intercalating so that four rows they are arranged in two rows you know like this then ultimately they turn up into just in two rows just understand okay that means in specific direction first the four rows gradually they become in a spe forming specific area of cells it convergent converge say here converge extension converge extension that means intercalation only the movement between us between the rows but in specific direction it's called convergent extension so under embolic movements the most important morphology movements we have discussed now is like you know invagination when the apical ends undergo to do lumen formation it will be invagination otherwise it is evagination engression you know certain cells will detach from the main uh, the epithelial sheath and they transform into free mesenchymal cells for further differentiation say neural crust say neural crust for example here neural crust but actually they undergo emigration you know then involution they know this the, just like conveyor belts inward movement they roll inward the roll inward then epibole you know spread by thinning thinning just imagine the size they become thin then intercalation that means movement between the cells so that they they, they will become thin and long convergent extension the same intercalation but in specific converge and extension so it's a all different morphogenic movements no the ultimate aim of gastrulation is to serve as a platform for organogenesis this is very important louis walpot uh, specifically says that is not about birth marriage or death but gastrulation is very important because without gastrulation you cannot expect you know the proper organogenesis so it's like it's like crucial crux point for further development it is like junction for advanced development of embryo so that's how the gastrulation is uh, is important that means the cell the, the cell differentiation you know the organisms all depends on this gastrulation this is very important okay and the my, my objective of these youtube classes is to for the full and needy students in a better possible way okay your comments and you your subscription will will encourage me further thanks for watching